Hunter x Hunter episode 64. Biscuit really choosing a task that Gon was perfectly suited for. They just crush that, as they do. Wait, point it at me. Do you know who the real enemy is? <laughs> Biscuit telling me I gotta go back to the start? Gotta do it all again? I don't know if I'm up for that. <laughs> I have it. You know, I have the going in me. I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not going. Not to that extent. Though, man, I like, I know I'm a broken record at this point. I'm thinking about this stuff daily now, watching this show. Realizing how my spirit in some things is just, it's been wrong. It's just wrong. This show's given me like a, a star to aim for. Conceptualizing it that way has raised my baseline. Strengthen X and X threaten. Both of those verbs <laughs> coming from Biscuit. This is pretty amazing. I hit on this last episode a bit, but you know that, that feeling when you actually do have skills or you actually are good at something or you, you pride yourself on something and then someone comes along who's in a league way above you and points out that you lack that thing? That's a bitter pill to swallow. Easy to get defensive. I was getting defensive for Kalua here because Kalua actually is a pretty good strategist. He's pretty clever. Gon has his moments, but I'd say Kalua is the standout between the two of them in that category. Again, for Kalua to be listening openly to Biscuit's critiques of him speaks volumes. <laughs> I kind of like Biscuit's strategy of just, you know, get in there and do the thing. They're keeping her hair consistent. Is it for him? Is it for him though? That would be amazing if it turns out Jing actually made all this for Gon specifically. This is the thing we struggled with initially. Make it automatic. I don't think I've ever thought about this, but that is a very common, necessary game mechanic that I guess does have a useful real-life parallel. Having played fighting games, there's a point at which you're not thinking about things anymore. You're not thinking about which move. You're not thinking about how to perform the move. You have this interesting kind of flow between you and the game where you're just like aware of the game or you're synced into the game on some crazy neurological level and your hands kind of move automatically. That's true for so many important areas of, of life as well. One easy example I can think of is social situations. If you're in a social situation, for example, and you are thinking consciously, actively, about what you should do, what you should say, how you should behave in that situation. You've already, in a way, you've kind of lost. The best, most fun in social interactions are when you're just kind of like flowing. I mean, it's not passive. It's active in the sense that you're paying attention to what's happening. But it depends on how streamlined it is, how many steps there are to get the output. And I think some of the tools to get there are repeated exposure, gradually increasing difficulty, like in a game, and arguably, perhaps also related to games, mentally trying to remove the stakes, seeing it as a long process and not seeing any one thing as like a game over or realizing that like you have continues. <laughs> The deadly candy horse. The real boss here is Biscuit. Biscuit is the most dangerous enemy in this game. It's a C! We're close wrong physically? I'm actually surprised about that. That I knew. This is what Wing was talking about. First we had child labor, now we have child abuse. But that is not the case for Biscuit. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> It's slowly getting here, but he's gonna get rocked, watch. <laughs> awesome. Terrifying. Extremely terrifying. But yeah, they, they love it. Uh-oh. Kind of her. Merciful of her to not demolish him right there. Now pay for your training. There we go. Stay on his feet. Oh, we're like really flashing forward. We haven't begun combat training? What happened to the, like, the battle with Edward Scissorhands in that hole? And getting smashed by Biscuit. 
This is interesting. This is very common in Shonen, but we haven't really seen these two fight each other, except like pillow fights. Again, a lot today. A lot of terms. I'm gonna have to study, review. And digging. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought she meant. I don't know if they're capable of starting out slow. I wonder how this will affect things. This could get weird. Could be great, could get weird. Could be both. There's a lot of room for deception in this, too. Why is this so satisfying? <laughs> it's well designed. That's, that's a really cool and scary thought. I like how she's all in. It's also really neat that her motivation feels real and, and honest. I mean, there's no super clear, obvious reason why she would do it. There's no main material gain. All right, she's exploiting them for child labor, probably to get gems, but that's not it, right? That's not the main thing here. She wouldn't be going to these lengths. She's putting her all into it. It really is because she sees their potential and wants to help and can't resist helping them. Oddly giving her even one more thing in common with Hisoka. But I get that, and it's so real to me. If you like someone, if you see their potential, it's so exciting. It's almost like you can't not do it. I catch myself sometimes, you know, talking to people about certain things that mean a lot to me. Like right now, for example, I'm advising a friend on possibly moving abroad. <laughs> like I'm like, why am I investing so much energy and effort into this? And the answer is sort of like, oh, I have to. I just have to. The end. <laughs> And they're super chill. They're like very professional about it. That makes sense in thinking about muscle groups too. I mean, I'm no fitness expert, but like the way I understand it, let's say your goal was to maximize only one muscle for whatever reason. You probably develop that muscle faster by working out the connected muscles for the motion to like this optimal point rather than only the muscle. So supportive. Oh, this is perfect. That's more than just strength, though. It's like protecting the rock in your hand. That's what I'm saying. Speaking of aiming for stars. Already? That's a great sign. I don't know, it hasn't come up at all, but I always feel a little bit of a risk of the competition thing. They're, they're so good at being on an even level, having their differences, but that being a compliment that keeps them on the same sort of tier. But you can imagine something like the, the Goku Krillin risk, right? Where Goku's Goku and Krillin's working hard, but he's just not Goku. That I feel like might have weird effects for the two of them. My favorite. I'm choosing rock. Hey, I finally won rock, scissors, paper. Give me enough chances, I win eventually. Fighting games are just basically complex rock, scissors, paper games. Evil is that real? That's a Kalua's abuse quota for the episode. What? Did we just discover our secret power? Give these guys credit. I mean, they're doing something. This does seem fun. Like, their group does seem fun. Gang wars are really fun. Not if it puts water on our f our flame of gang war. Uh -oh. Okay. With Nen, slowly over time. Fistful of gunpowder. Oh. 
Alright, this is not so much fun anymore. Yeah, he ruined the game of the people trying to ruin the game. Interesting. You free yourself by a game of tag. Alright, what do you want though? The cards? I was about to ask that. This isn't Jujutsu Kaisen. Maybe there's a pact here. Okay. There it is. I mean, well, alright, it's so conflicting, but on this topic of how do you play games, what's acceptable, what is the actual game you're playing, which also is just a broader theme in Hunter x Hunter, or a broader question. This is the challenge, right, because ideally you need rules for a game or any system to, to be successful and iterable, but like, he did win his game. This is not great, it's underhanded, but he just won his game. I think a common mark of a lot of heroes and my favorite characters in stories are, they are good people, they have rules, let's call them, but they also find a way to win the highest, most significant game. A contrast to that that I think is common in life is kind of a willful ignorance to the metagame of people who are willing to break the rules you want to keep. And it's not always that you want to keep them because you really believe in them, but because you don't really have faith in your ability to play in that league or you're afraid of that world or what have you. An example would be in relationships, right? Let's say the ideal is to be a really good partner and to find someone who you really work well with and are in love with and you both are loyal to each other. That's great, but I feel like there also can be a mistake in thinking that that feeling you have about the relationship or the, the way you wish relationships were will be some kind of magic rule that acts as a defense from outside more material, more strategic, more devious, calculating, ruthless forces. What it may not. Like guys who will date a beautiful, wonderful girl and think like, well, now we're dating. I got her. We're sealed. My responsibility in understanding the game ends when really it's like, no, you can believe in the magic of love and all that stuff. And you can be in a very committed relationship and you can have faith in the other person. But like, you still got to pay attention to yourself, your tools and the cold animal realities of the thing. Because people will come along who don't care about the rules. And like, what is your plan for that? I think sometimes people get a little bit too comfortable leaning on the rules they want, the game they want rather than how it's actually played and it doesn't even have to be super malicious you know like as a guy sometimes I meet girls who are interested in me who have boyfriends and I don't necessarily want any part of that but I know this is really dark this is just a thought right the thought inevitably emerges why am I passing up something that I would enjoy because someone else isn't good enough to keep it not that that's a valid reason to do anything of course but this is a competitive game and anything that involves competition is gonna have that factor no I mean it's very calculating Really, he does. Oh. Oh, it's a, it was a movie. Crank. He's gonna warp. Outside the game, that's tough. I mean, I don't know. I don't really see any way. I think you gotta just give him the cards, move on. It's tough, but you did it once, you can do it again. You know that hurts. I guess we're not doing a gang war after all. What a disappointment. This is a crazy, bold negotiation move, trying to stall. I feel like in movies, this is where a hostage dies. I don't know, he's a smart guy, maybe he has something up his sleeve. Oh,我们がるさんは yapper. This guy talks a lot. Nah, he survived that. He's fine. Right? Did he just die? That's unfortunate. I liked him. I guess he wasn't that smart after all. Is that his- Oh my god. What's in the- Yeah, we know what's in the bag. We can see it. We can see inside the bag. Who hot? The yappy crew. <laughs> all around. 
I mean, they can say whatever they want. They can make up any kind of lie because they're terrified and they have no idea. Sure, why not? For the gentle gang. Oh, they found it. That's interesting. What implications does that have? Like, wouldn't people find a way off if that was possible? There must be some kind of barrier or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we got this one. I kind of want the Phantom Troops to run into the bombers so they can just annihilate them. That would be really satisfying.